How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and yesterday I went to a car show where there were a handful of different types of cars. The majority of them were stanced out cars and so I decided to go around get some footage and we're going to see what you guys think about the builds. Now I'm going to be respectful of the builds. I'm not going to sit here and just bash every single one of them but I will point out my observations in the most respectable way possible. Again, I'm not trying to start any hate or beef, but I believe everyone's build is allowed to be criticized. So if you want to criticize mine, go ahead, go for it. I'm not going to get butthurt about it. But anyway, one of the reasons why I'm choosing to talk over the footage is because they had music playing during the show and I didn't want to have to deal with copyright issues. So this seems like the most logical way to do it. Just go ahead and talk over it. Anyways, first car is a 6th gen Camaro SS with a whole lot of red all over it. We know red makes you faster, so I don't blame him for doing that. This is what I would do too if I'm trying to be as fast as possible. But with local laws, that might just be a bit too much red to take in for Southern California. You know how strict they are. And look at this Shelby GT350 with this gigantic ass wing. Also, hashtag bag life. There's nothing wrong with being on bags, but the whole bag and wing setup with a roll cage on the interior, it's like, what you going for here? Are you trying to be a race car? Are you trying to be a stanced car? Is it all for looks or what? I don't know. GT350 is still one of the sexiest cars out there, and I like it. Next car is a super wide Hyundai Genesis, and Jesus Christ, you guys need to cook some spaghetti because he took the pots from your kitchen and put them on his wheels. Look how deep those dishes are. That is super crazy. Look how wide the car is. A lot of camber too. Completely stanced out. This is probably one of the more extreme cars at the car show. I mean, look at that. Fitment is on point for that whole thing. He's got a little bit of rubbing on that, but that's no big deal. That's what you expect with a car like this. But oh my god, just, just take in how wide this thing is. Look at that. Imagine driving behind this and the rocks just being kicked up at you. That's disrespectful right there. Anyway, right next to that car was another stanced out FRS. You're going to see a lot of these too. Stanced out FRS is very common cars to see stanced out. And this camber in the rear was just crazy. He must have no traction. He could probably break loose going like two miles an hour in a puddle. Just zero traction at all. Good thing he's on all weathers. Got to get as much traction as possible. All right, this is a pretty clean looking 370Z right here. I don't know if I'm a fan of the front bumper just yet. Uh, I think if it had a bottom grill, it would look a lot better, but it is missing that part. The fitment was questionable. I know a lot of people like it super flush. I think he was playing it a bit safe, and I don't blame him for that, okay? If you, know, if you want to take care of your car, go ahead. Nothing wrong with that, but I think the color pops right next to that. This is something that I kind of wanted to do with my Mustang. Get it all black and then subtly have carbon fiber fenders or flares or something on it, and that way you have to like notice it up close. I didn't notice it from across the parking lot until I got right next to it, and then I was like, damn, that's pretty clean. That's something that I was thinking about doing to my car a while back, but that shit gets expensive, and I don't got that kind of money. Up next, we have a high-performance car that's probably never going to see a track in its life. Sadly, we have a super wide-body GTR. It is done right. It is done with a lot of money dumped into it, of course. I mean, it looks like the car every 12-year-old builds in Forza Horizon 4, and I don't blame him for that. It's a good-looking car. It's just I feel like it should get driven a bit more, and I feel like this car probably sits in a garage. I looped back around to the Genesis and I noticed this weird little warp on the fender flare. Don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but the interior... The interior is starting to look a little bit familiar, if you guys know what I'm talking about. We got paint matched interior. It looks like it's done right. Again, I don't know if this is a wrap or a spray paint, but at the same time, I don't know. I can kind of picture it on Craigslist in a couple years, if you guys know what I'm saying. Next car, another GT86. Wheels, questionable. I don't know. That looks like something that used to be on my Mustang. Not a huge fan of those wheels. The color, though, it's a pretty nice color. It's not in your face. And it does its job for this build. Now look at the camber. Zero traction gang. That's what they should put on their banners. Instead of like camber life, they should put zero traction gang or rolling on ice skates. Because that seems a little bit more fitting. And whoever did this to your exhaust, you need to go see them ASAP and get your money back. Whatever half-assed muffler shop you went to, go there, demand a refund. If not, file a lawsuit. Next up, we have a thick-ass Lexus RC. Weirdly enough, one of the builds I like the most. I don't know why. I, it just popped for me, but that was it. Nothing too crazy to say about it. But can someone please explain to me why this dude looks like he's driving around with Donkey Kong barrels as wheels? Like, come on. That's a little bit too thick. 
Next up, a stanced out mustard Mustang. I'm, I'm kind of a fan on the color. It, it's growing on me slowly. At first, it looked a little bit weird, but now it looks pretty good. Let me know what you guys think about the stanced out Mustang. And then right next to it, we have the only three valve there. Mine is still at the shop, sadly, but we have the only three valve there repping it, and it is lady driven. That is why it is a lot of purple on it. Purple, you know, it's a gender neutral color. It's 2020 now. We got to be a little bit more respectable of that. But uh, let me know. I think it could be dropped a few inches and then it'll look a bit better. Hood popped on a V6 charger. I was looking for something expensive, something shiny, and I found it. Something very shiny, but not too expensive. A cold air intake. There you go. Oh, yeah, and some paint matched uh, plastic, which is, uh, well, that's nice, you know. It's color. Yeah, adds to it somewhat. Shiny color. Cool. Can someone tell me what the hell this thing is? I still don't know what the hell this thing is. I looked at it in person, found a badge, didn't recognize the badge, didn't care after that. What is this? It looks expensive. I don't know if it's just a kit that goes on a car. The wheels don't look too expensive. The tires look very tacky. The underglow looks tacky. Can someone please enlighten me what the hell this thing is? Because I have no idea. Even the interior didn't look anything fancy. Didn't, I mean, look at that steering wheel. That doesn't say expensive to me. Everything else just looks like something you can find on Wish.com. Just what every crazy looking race car needs in the trunk. Some heavy ass subwoofers and a bunch of air ride suspension parts. Yeehaw. This was the only car there that looked like they were going for somewhat of a performance build. Underneath the hood had a fat ass turbo. I mean, look at that thing. Jesus Christ. And then the wheel setup was just beautiful as well. Say what you want about the wrap. The wrap is temporary. Who cares? But the car itself looked really nice. I mean, full on race car. At least that's what it looks like to me. But enough hearing me yap, let me just play the two-step competition and let you guys vote which car was the loudest. Now obviously, the microphone on my phone is not the greatest, so I don't know how it's going to sound. I haven't even listened to the clips yet, but let's go and listen to some loud-ass explosions.
Anyway guys, I'll let you guys vote down in the comments which car you think won the two-step competition in person. Of course, it sounds a lot different than it does over the phone, but the Miata or the Grey Z was probably the loudest, and obviously the Mustang was shooting the biggest flames. So you guys vote what's more important, noise or flame. That's up to you guys. Anyway, it was really cool. Again, hope I didn't upset anyone or make anyone cry because I said a joke about their car, but who knows? There's a lot of sensitive sunflowers out there in SoCal, so I wouldn't doubt it. But uh, yeah, cool little thing. I really wish my car was ready to go. I was hoping if it was Plasti dipped and it came out good that I would have brought it, maybe not put it in the show or anything like that because I didn't want to be stuck there all day, but I would have brought it and I did bump into some subs there. So it was really cool to meet you guys. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, pick up some merch to support the channel, and until next video, peace.